So the Ryzen 9 7900X3D, one of the best gaming CPUs out there, which is also pretty good in productivity. If you have that and want to get even more performance out of it, because somehow you're not satisfied yet, maybe because you saw the 9800X3D come out, you want more. Well, this is the right video for you. This is also going to help you reduce the temperature, the power consumption, the noise of your system, and even the latency of your system. And in case you don't believe me, just try out my settings. Let me know in the end. So before we get started, a few disclaimers, okay? Before we get into this undervolting guide. So this is better than overclocking. I don't recommend overclocking on the X3D chips. And I am one by one trying to cover every single CPU and GPU on my channel, telling you guys how to tweak every single component, RAM included, to get the best performance possible. So the only thing I ask you guys is if at the end of the video, when you tried my settings, they helped you, uh, please drop a like and subscribe. That's it. That's all I want, but I want it after you've seen the video, okay? Now, another disclaimer. This is going to work on every single motherboard out there. Here, I have an MSI Project Zero motherboard, the one with the connectors on the back, but it's really going to work for MSI, Asus, Gigabyte, uh, Azure, Biostar, whatever you have, it's going to work on. I recommend complementing this guide with the RAM tweaking guide for AM5, which I've made, it's on the channel. So maybe consider checking that one out as well. With that said, let's go into the BIOS and let's get started. Here we are in the BIOS. Now make sure you're running the latest BIOS. If you're not, just download it from your motherboard's website and you will be fine. Now, first thing we want to do, which is not part of the undervolt tutorial, but just make sure you do, is enable your XMP right there. If you don't have this or in the entry point this you want to go into the advanced mode and go into the overclocking settings which may be called ai tweaker if you have an asus motherboard may have a different name if you have a different motherboard but on msi it's called just ochi so go in there and the xmp will be just down here make sure you enable that and check this out separately make sure it's stable because i don't want you guys enabling this then your system is unstable and you think it's the undervolt let's go ahead with the actual undervolt now we're going to have two types but the second type is locked on most motherboards. So most of you guys are going to be fine with the first type, which we're doing right now, okay? So it's not in the OC settings, but AMD made it the same for every single motherboard. So we want to go into settings, advanced, and then AMD overclocking. Now it's telling you we are about to break your PC. Tell him no problem. And then we want to go all the way down until we find the precision boost overdrive tab. And then we want to put this on advanced. We want to go into platform thermal throttle control, which may also be called something like thermal limit, okay? If it's less uh, detailed and you want to put it into manual. And now here you want to put 80. Now this is the degrees at which your CPU will throttle down, but it's not actually going to throttle. It's going to adjust the curve. So you can go, I recommend all the way up to 90. I don't recommend higher than 90 personally you can go all the way down to 70. Now, the higher you go in this number, the more the performance, but the more the temperature, the power consumption, and the noise. So 80, usually, it's good because it's not going to be a limiting factor, but you can try to change this one later and test it out. We then want to go into the curve optimizer option right here, put it on an all cores. I will talk briefly about the per core one later as well. Put the sign on negative. And now here we want to put 20. Now, if you just want to copy my settings and close, you can just now hit F10, save and exit, and you're done. You can close the video, test it out, maybe drop a like and subscribe. In case you want to stay, I will tell you guys how to tweak it better for yourself, okay? So what is this? This is a voltage offset, but it's not a simple offset. So we are decreasing the voltage by variable number, which means the higher this number, the better, like flat out. For example, if 30 works for you, you're going to get more performance, more FPS, lower temperature, lower power consumption, all of it. But the issue is the higher this number, the less likely your PC is to be stable. So you need to run a proper stress test. I recommend Prime 95, Cinebench just for a quick test, and then OCCT are my picks to test stability. Now, for most people, 20 is going to be fine. If 20 crashes, you want to go 15. And the worst CPU in the world is going to do 10. On the other hand, if you're very lucky, you're going to be able to do 30. If you're just a bit luckier, you want to do 25. And uh, I've never seen a CPU run with 40 fully stable. So really, I think maximum is going to be probably 30 or 35, realistically. Now, you may also want to go and do per core, which means you try it out on every single core. But uh, this is pretty simple. Basically, you put 20 on every single core, then you test it out. 
and then maybe some calls are gonna, are gonna be better for you. But the thing is, you're gonna get maybe 1% better performance and it's gonna take you like three days to test. So I recommend you just go all calls. And this is it for the dynamic option, which is the one I recommend. Now, if you wanna do static option, you wanna put all this back to disabled, back to normal, this one too, just put it back to auto. And now we wanna go back into the OC tab. If your BIOS lets you change the frequency of your CPU, you wanna put 48 on the frequency. But in my case, I cannot do that because I'm running the latest BIOS. They don't want you to do it, okay? So I then wanna go all the way down on CPU voltage. And under CPU voltage, I simply wanna put 1.2, but again, in my BIOS, I cannot do that. So I'm just telling you, 48 with 1.2 seems to work for me. You may wanna adjust it a little bit, but we don't have the option here. So what I can show you instead is as follows. So if you're doing the first dynamic option, you wanna go into the advanced CPU configuration and under config TDP, you may wanna put this one higher than stock. I recommend for most people 120 watts is a good middle ground, but if you have a very good cooler, put 170. It's gonna give you literally free performance, but it's gonna increase the power draw a little bit and increase the temperature a little bit. But if you pair this with the undervolt, you're gonna be plenty fine. I recommend you do this even if you do the static option and, and so you go with uh, a set voltage and a set frequency. Speaking a little bit more about the static option in case you have it, again, I find 48 is just a sweet spot for the ratio, but the voltage goes anywhere from 1.175 all the way up to 1.25 if you're very unlucky. And this is really it for the video. Again, most of you guys just do the dynamic option. Configure the TDP, you're gonna be perfect. If the video was helpful, drop a like and subscribe. You may wanna check out my RAM tweaking guide as well. And also I have guides for your GPU as well, probably. So maybe those interest you as well. And I hope to see you guys again on the channel for maybe some PC builds or something else. Bye-bye.